how are you going to get over the resistance to GMO that is so strong around the world? How do we persuade, or how do you, or how do the people in this area really uh, persuade people that genetically modified by CRISPR is not necessarily going to make things unsafe? And how do you, how do you deal with that? It's another communication issue, I think. Yeah, I could not agree more. So, so first of all, we can't repeat the shortcomings from the 80s and 90s. We have to learn our lessons um, and, and how we communicate and who communicates and what messages and what voices and what narratives are shared is very important. Um, and there's a great framework that was um, uh, published recently, 33 years overdue in the, in the U.S. with the USDA Secure Act, showcasing and specifying very um, a stringent, very specific, very precise uh, examples of how CRISPR can be used to recapitulate natural processes and fall under a non-regulated regime. And you really have to explain to people where the value is being created. It's not big ag, it's not profits, it's environmental stewardship. And I think this is where trust in science, trust in scientists, trust in regulators, and even sometimes trust in industrial organizations that are trying to do the right thing with the right values, the right missions, the right objectives, the right mindset is very important. And building those narratives, doing it the right way and articulating it the right way is what it's going to take. And I think the, the world is, is pursuing this. We're seeing this with impossible foods and impossible burgers, right? I and mean, there's ways to do right things we use, with the use of technologies. And environmental stewardship is very important and is, is going to be here to stay and is going to be the solutions uh, that we're able to use to address those big problems.